If you're a beginner to carp fishing or you're fairly new to the sport, you may find the vast array of different carp hook patterns confusing. So which carp hook pattern should you use for which carp fishing rig? In this video, I'm going to talk you through the different patterns of carp fishing hooks, try to explain the difference between them and the best application for each pattern, so that next time you go carp fishing, you'll know what hook to choose for what rigs in any fishing situation. So firstly, I'm just going to quickly run you through the five main patterns of carp hooks that are available, just so you know what I'm talking about when I refer to them. There are, of course, variations of each of these available as well, but I'm just going to try and stick to the basics. So let's talk about wide gapes. These are probably the most common and popular type of carp hook, really. They're very versatile. The features are, it's got an interned eye, so the eye kind of bends in towards the point a little bit there. Normally a, a medium shank and a round bend, and then a long straight point, but you can also get a beaked point version and as the name suggests, a wide gape. So the distance between the point and the shank there is quite wide, which offers quite good hooking potential. Next, I'm gonna talk about curved shank hooks. These are probably the second most popular pattern of hook, particularly with the advent of the Ronnie rig in the last few years. This is the most common type of hook pattern that would be used with that rig. As the name suggests, they've got a gentle curve to the shank. So the bit between the eye and the bend is curving slightly. The eye tends to be straight in line with the shank and normally has a fairly round bend with a kind of a medium gape there and a straight point. You don't really see beaked point curved hooks. That would be considered like a circle hook really, which you don't often use in carp fishing. The next most popular pattern of carp hook is probably the chod hook. Now this is basically a variation of a wide gape hook. If we put the two next to each other here, you'll see they're very similar apart from one subtle difference in that the eye is outturned, meaning it bends away from the point as opposed to interned towards the point on the wide gape hook it's outturned and these have got very specific applications which I'll talk you through later when we go through which hook to use for which rig. The next pattern of hook that I want to talk you through is the long shank. As the name suggests, obviously the shank is a bit longer on this type of a hook. If you compare it to a wide gape hook, the shank is that little bit longer between the sort of start of the bend there um, we'll get those sort of lined up, you know, you've got a good sort of five mil extra shank length there. Normally they have an interned eye and a sort of a, a medium gape on them, not often that wide gape um, and always a straight point on these hooks as well. I've not very often seen beak point versions. And finally then, we've got the continental style of hook. Now this is a very specific shape for certain situations, which I'll talk to you about later. Normally the wire is a lot thicker on these. So if you compare it to say the chod hook, you can see that it's a lot heavier in the wire, a lot stronger hook for certain applications. And you've normally got a straight point on these, a specific bend that kind of sweeps round and then suddenly goes into the point which gives quite an aggressive hooking capability. A fairly wide gape on there and a gently interned eye as well, all built for kind of uh, tough situations and hit and hold type fishing, which I'll talk to you about a bit later. Now you might be thinking if wide gape hooks are the most popular pattern of hook, why not just use them for every situation? Well, each hook has its own specific benefits and drawbacks and it's up to the angler to decide which hook has more benefits to drawbacks in each situation. So when should you use and when shouldn't you use each different hook pattern? So a wide gape hook I think is generally best suited to bottom bait fishing or wafter fishing. It's good for the most basic knotless knot rigs all the way through to slip D rigs, snowman rigs, blowback rigs, all those type of rigs where you're going to be fishing a bait on the bottom. Now you can use them of course for pop-up fishing as well, but I think other types of hooks are better suited to this. The interned eye on a wide gape hook gives really good hooking potential when a fish picks up a bait from the bottom and the, the rig drags along its mouth as the fish moves and the interned eye will help it turn in the fish's mouth. Now this can obviously be enhanced with shrink tubing as well. The time to not use a wide gape hook would be when using stiffer hook link materials such as fluorocarbon, monofilament, 
or coated braids. We'll talk later a little bit about hooks that are better suited for those different types of hook link materials. Curve shanked hooks are my favourite hooks really for fishing withy pool rigs. So you've got a curved upright section and the curve of the shank just complements that nice big C-shaped upright section which locks around the bottom lip of the fish when it sucks in your pop-up. They can also be used for KD style rigs where you've got the hair coming off the back of the whipping. The hook, because of its curved shape, will sit further away from the hair as the bait is picked up, which allows it to drop down a lot more effectively when the bait is picked up. They can, of course, be used for any rig, really. Bottom bait rigs, such as uh, blowback rigs and slip D rigs, are quite good with curve shank hooks as well, but I much prefer a straighter shank for that type of rig. But it is down to personal preference and experimenting to see what works best for you on your waters. Now, chod style hooks with their outturned eye, as the name suggests, were originally intended for chod rigs, where you've got a stiff bristle filament tied knotless knot style with the tag end passed back through to form a D, and the stiff material is complemented by the outturned eye because it allows the hook to sit straighter in line with the hook link instead of kicking off at a funny angle like you would get with an interned eye. So a chod hook is perfect for those stiffer bristle filaments that you use with a chod rig, but also I really like using them with D rigs. So the sort of uh, amnesia D rig you might have seen on my channel before. Some people call it a clone rig, but basically it's like a chod rig in the way you tie it, except that it's a bottom bait or wafter presentation where it lays on the bottom. And you just tie a knotless knot, put the tag end back through to form a D, and you usually fish a wafter on that sort of rig. And the outturned eye just helps it sit nicely instead of uh, kicking it in too far like you would get with an interned eye. So yeah, chod hooks are much better suited to stiffer materials. You can use them with coated braid, monofilament, stiff bristle filament, and any sort of stiffer hook link material. Now, long shank hooks used to be the absolute favourite of carp anglers in the 80s and 90s, and it was a style of hook that I believe most people were using at that time. The problem with a long shank hook is because of the longer shank, it acts as a lever for the hook hold. So when you're fighting a fish and it's got the hook in its mouth, it'll turn its head, you know, and swim away from you. And that extra length of metal that the shank forms it's like a lever pulling it off to the side and then when the fish turns the other way it levers it off to the other side and it can cause mouth damage, cause the hook to slip and quite often cause you to lose fish as well. I think you can get the same sort of effect of the hooking potential of a long shank rig with shrink tubing. So you can extend the shank of your wide gate hook with shrink tubing to form a long shank but that's flexible so that it won't lever the hook out as badly. I think the reason these hooks were so popular was because they do hook the carp a little bit quicker, a little bit better than other types of hooks. Because the longer shank, it allows the point to be further back in the fish's mouth when the hook turns. So you get deeper hook holds and more firm hook holds. But the problem with that is, obviously, as we said, you get that levering effect of the longer shank. So definitely not the hook to be using around snags or weed or anything like that. They are okay in certain situations, open water where you, you're not sort of fishing for really big fish and you just want to get quick bites and you're not sort of trying to bully fish away from any sort of danger, then you can get away with them in that situation. But I generally don't use them in my fishing anymore because I did get a lot of hook poles when I was using them and the odd bit of mouth damage as well. So these days I never use long shank hooks, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't, I'm just making you aware of the dangers of using them. Long shanks are most commonly used with blowback rigs and snowman rigs and that sort of thing where you're fishing a bait on the bottom. You don't often see people using them with pop-ups. They have a really good hooking potential when the fish picks up your bait and it swims off. The hook will turn really quickly and, and catch hold of the fish's bottom lip. Now continental style hooks with their thicker wire and their aggressive hooking potential are really only suited to snag fishing and weed fishing, anywhere where you're hit and hold fishing. So you get your bite and you're gonna pick up your rod and walk back and you're just trying to bully that fish away from the snags. It sounds quite brutal, but if you do it right, it can be quite a safe way of fishing and a very productive way of fishing because as we all know, carp spend a lot of time around weed and snags. 
So if you're fishing in those situations and you're finding you're getting hook pulls or you're finding that your hooks are straightening out because you're having to pull so hard, then a continental style hook will get you out of danger in that situation. They tend to hook the fish and stay in and the very little chance of the hook straightening out or tearing out of the fish's mouth. So for certain situations, a continental style hook is hard to beat. They're also quite good on waters where it's quite rough terrain, perhaps river fishing, you know, you've got a rocky bottom and you need a hook that's a lot more durable and stand up to sort of um, abuse really, maybe even fishing for, for catfish and sturgeon and things like that, where you need a hook that's really, really strong and really, really reliable, then a continental style hook is good. But for most angling situations in the UK, they're not really necessary. I've done snag fishing with normal wide gapes and chod hooks and things like that and, and curved shanks and generally find that it's all right and you can get the fish away from it. But in certain situations, like I say, then a continental hook is worth using. They can be used with any rig, really. Um, mostly, probably, people are using them with bottom bait rigs and snowmen and things like that. I'm talking about the sort of um, extremes of fishing, really, with these hooks. You're not really going to be fishing little delicate pop-up rig presentations with a big heavy hook like that. It's mostly for fishing on the bottom. They're quite a heavy hook, so you might want to consider a little bit of buoyancy in your bait, balancing it out just so that it's not different to what the carp are picking up, um, you know, your freebies. It's going to be heavier, so you might want to have a little bit of buoyancy in there just to counteract that. So if I had to pick one hook pattern for all of my carp fishing that I think I'd be able to tie up any of my favourite rigs with, it would probably be a chod style hook because the outturned eye allows you to fish stiffer materials so I could do my D rig with that as well. But if I wanted to fish a bottom bait rig like a blowback, I'd use a bit of shrink tube and form a kicker so it just brings that line out at that aggressive angle from the hook. And actually I quite like the fact that with a chod hook it widens the gape slightly. When you put your kicker on, the line kind of goes away from the point before it comes round, so you get that wider gape, and the bump on the back of the hook that's formed by that outturned eye can also help turn the hook in the fish's mouth as well. So I quite often use a chod hook for my bottom baits um, and my sort of blowback type rigs, but I really, really like the D-rig as well, so I use it a lot for that. And you can definitely use it for pop-up rigs. It was designed for a chod rig. You could use it on a multi-rig, you could use it on a withy pool rig with your shrink tube brought right round into a nice C shape. You could definitely get away with using a chod hook for that. So I feel like a chod hook will pretty much do most rigs and maybe not a Ronnie rig, but I don't like using them anyway. You might have seen this in my previous videos. So yeah, not really the one for me, Ronnie rigs, but I'd probably use a curve shank if I was gonna use that rig, but for everything else, then a chod hook would definitely do the job so leave me a comment below guys what your favorite hook pattern is for your chosen sort of fishing rigs and why you like to use that particular pattern don't forget to check out these other videos on the screen now for more tips for your carp fishing and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well it doesn't cost you anything it just helps me grow the channel and help me get my videos out to more people so i hope it's been helpful for you and I hope it helps you catch a few more carp. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.